we go. How's everybody doing? Yay! We're looking like a dismal crowd, and now you guys just look ugly and mean. Look at you guys. You guys are ready for action. Problems that we're not going to talk about. I'd like to welcome some people. Jenny, hello, Jenny. It's been years and years. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny, uh, where do you live now? What do you do? Uh, I'm going to bore you with the details. Can you, uh, what's your name? You. Lucky. Lucky. Lucky, can you please, uh, lift the curtain up slightly there for just for a second? There's a picture that hangs on our wall. If it cooperates. Lucky, are you part of the Special Olympics of the AP Club or what? Here, come on. Oh, he's going, Jenny painted that picture. Can you believe it, Jenny? Jenny, if you hate our show and want to leave in the middle of it, it's okay, I don't blame you, most people do. But before you leave, you should go back to that door and look in our kitchen, and some of your other artwork hangs in my, uh, in my living room, in my kitchen. Like She's a tremendous artist. Look at her. She made a circus poster there out of a piece of plywood. Okay, Lucky, you're on. No, no pee on things, just pull the thing down. Would you like an energy drink, Lucky? Right there. Go ahead, take an energy drink right there. There you go. Anybody wants an energy drink? There are 40 cases of energy drink. You can have as many as you want. Take them away, drink them, or pour them on people. Pour them on the smoke hot guys. Wow. That's what they're here for. They're here for you to abuse them. And uh, it'll all make sense to you. Welcome, people. Welcome. Right. Come right on in. It's okay. Right next to the welcome here. It's good. Right there, front row. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, before we start our show, ladies and gentlemen, this is dishonest, inherently. It's vile. It's bathed in violence. This makes you not a good person. However, this is an angle. And you, ladies and gentlemen, America, Amer what happened? You're freaking out here. The internet is dead again. Dead again, again. oh no. Um, Jimmy, can you please again. pull the cord on the internet? Try to start it. Fix the internet. Start the internet up. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, America is, is, a, is, a, is a great place. And it's filled with great people. However, in this economy, no one can afford to be a great person. So, I just want to, you know, this has just been like a way to oh, simulate no. your mind. That you need an angle. And I need an angle, because goddamn, I can't even afford to pay for the fucking table. Look at this. We're turned off here. We're cut off. <laughs> cut off at the hilt. It's over! Look at this! It's done! Oh, yeah, Jesus. Technical difficulties. That's right. Space. The final frontier. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the monologues of the astrologer Pete Goldie, whose five-minute mission to boldly explore NASA charts and graphs, to seek out swirling gas and dust, Explain to you, the people of San Francisco, why it is we spent $68 billion last week to modify lenses and satellites to do it. Hi, Jan. You doing FDR? Hot mic. It's a hot mic tonight. You gotta get back. Hey, what if I do it tonight without my notes? You want me to do that? That it can't possibly get any words to go. Chicken. Yes. Now I want to talk about the flashing, blinking red on the top oh, there. This is and my your projectors. Yeah, your projector sucks so yeah. much. Yeah. It's not a NASA projector. <laughs> no, but you know, for less than one billion dollars, we can get you another projector. In fact, we figured it out. We figured out the whole budget of everything and all the wires and the cables. And, and what that picture is really showing is the Milky Way. And uh, there's the Milky Way. They actually have one single photograph that shows over a million stars in a the. A million uh, stars. A million stars. And guess how much that costs NASA? A million dollars. Not a penny. It's not a NASA telescope. They can do that now with optical scopes. Good stuff, that. Good stuff. Anyway, here we go. Remember just... where we left off last week? <laughs> and now they're sitting. You ever look there. at your hand? You know, like whoa, you know, <laughs> whoa, really? <laughs> How, they don't laugh at anything I say, though. No. They'll laugh at anything I say. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> Can I, can I just once try that? Okay, let's try it. Here we go. Go. Space science update. <laughs> Alright, that, that's kind of weird. Space yeah. science update has never been funnier. Yeah. You know what's really funny, Pete? Getting... No, you don't. I know you don't. Let's just get this over with. Come on, let's go. Last week I was talking about how you build a space telescope 
that can detect gamma rays. Gamma rays, they penetrate everything, they reflect off of nothing. So I went on and on about the very simple trick of taking something, you either use thousands, tens of thousands of pinhole cameras, in which you really, really hope the gamma ray will come through that pinhole and hit your detector, or you can use a very special, neat trick and a lot of mathematics called a coded aperture mask. That's a very simple coded aperture mask in the front of a gamma ray detector. There you see it. This coded aperture mask would be equivalent to, you know, like 50,000 pinhole cameras. And with that, you can actually finally you know, get an update and make a picture. And uh, what I was bringing up is the new uh, gamma ray telescope called the GLASS, or our Gamma Ray Large Aperture Space Telescope, which uh, when launched became named Fermi, has been up for a year now. It doesn't matter and the where that the actual gamma ray can pick up from the hole, and you can tell the very very expensive machine can't stand in front of it now. Or the other way around, the actual gamma ray is the reason I'm pointing this out is, is the Fermi telescope, which is in space, collecting fantastic data. The Fermi telescope sitting in a clean room with some guys out underneath, you know, making sure that, that there's no bubble gum stuck under there. And this thing went into space. It does not use a coded aperture mask. No. Well, if it doesn't use a coded aperture mask, right. then where do the black dots hump? I am going to explain that to you now oh, in great detail. But it's also unusual in that it only has two scientific instruments on it. One of them is a large silver cube in the top. And the other is this array of small little cylindrical objects, that one there, those there, 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 there. Gamma ray bursts are the very brightest things in the universe. For a few seconds, they're brighter than all the suns of, of all the universes combined, and some, all sorts of numbers like that. They, like, you cannot imagine how big an explosion it is that makes a gamma ray burst. But it only lasts a few seconds, and those instruments are simply to pick up that. Now, I showed you that because I wanted to get it out of the way to let you know that there's one other scientific instrument, this silver cube on the top. And what does that silver cube not have on it? A thermometer. A coded mask aperture. Right, coded mask aperture, sorry. Exactly. And what that thing on the top is called is the Large Area Telescope, for which the GLASS, the uh, Gamma Ray Large Area Space Telescope, was actually named. And uh, what that thing does is it will also detect the gamma rays, show where they're coming from, and show the energy that they have. And they actually are able to uh, detect higher energies with more accuracy and everything else than all the other gamma ray tele space telescopes before then without the coded aperture mask, which is pretty incredible. Did you just say an anti-coincidence shield? Yes. You, are you curious about that? Yeah. Oh, are you? Okay. Um, uh, they have to put in a... <clears throat> what do you think it's called? Uh, a chiometer? Anti-coincidence detector. Right, an yes. anti... Exactly. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, what's really happening here is, see, if you, have a, if you have a cosmic ray, that's actually a charged particle. The gamma rays are neutral. The charged uh, particle hits the coincidence detector, and it goes right on through. <laughs> hits the calorimeter at the bottom, and they measure them, and they go, oh, that was a cosmic ray, we're not interested, we only want gamma rays. So uh, the computer throws it out. However, a gamma ray hits it, it goes in, hits this, causes a splay of all the positron and uh, electron particles, and then they, they find out there's more than one decay product coming through there, and they go, oh, gamma ray, we'll record this and make, take, take, take uh, some data out of this. And again, 880,000 layers of uh, silicon to do all this. A movie of what happens when you actually see the whole sky in gamma rays. Pretend that your eyes are gamma rays now. Ew. And pretend that the circumference of this circle is actually the Milky Way. And you're looking straight up from the Milky Way. And you'll see these uh, gamma ray... The brown dwarf? No, it's the sun. The sun's actually a gamma ray emitter. Is the gamma rays appear and disappear. Gamma ray sources here scattered throughout the sky. What this is showing, again, is our Milky Way in the plane there. Lots of gamma ray sources. The, the Vela Pulsar, that's simply a, a neutron star spinning at high rates, many gamma rays and mag magnetic rays, and that was nice. Can we have it again, David? 
the brightest blazar known. A blazar? What is a blazar, everyone? All together now? A TV. Hmm? Yeah. First year. Japanese oh. consortium. Anyone? Uh, Peanut butter. No? Uh, yeah. A jacket. That's right. A blue jacket. Jesus Christ! A blazar is actually a, a galaxy with an active galactic nuclei. In other words, it has a supermassive. Yeah, there's a little bit. But the largest and brightest one ever seen, which is on eBay right now, is uh, was detected by the Fermi uh, Space Telescope. You want to know the name of that blazar? Briefly. 3C 454.3.